Hi, my name is Ted Bastian. I've been tattooing for 20 years, traveling all over the world to learn and improve my techniques, and I'm here to help you improve your own watercolor painting technique. Through this seminar, we're gonna uh, look at three different parts. We're gonna look at color theory, techniques, and uh, composition. Now, this last part, I think, is very important because is what can determine the success of the or the failure of your painting. So we are going to look at the basics. We are going to look how to create dynamism in a painting and how to create less obvious and more authentic uh, compositions. Yeah. 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 How are we going to do this? I really believe that to have a long lasting improvement and also to find your own identity, we need to work on the basic and the fundamentals of this. Meaning we want to learn the rules and the principles that stand behind why we like certain colors and how we combine them, how we create engaging compositions. So first of all, what the principles of designs are and what a composition that is dynamic is. Painting techniques, so learning how to distinguish the different tools, how to use them and how to use and choose different techniques for different effects depend on the style that you're trying to achieve, right? So you know what they say, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish, you feed him for life. So instead of a short-lived, very simple, specific case of how to paint this or that, I would rather focus on how to paint. Now moving into techniques, first is wet on dry, meaning that you put wet color on dry paper. We use two brushes, one for color and one for blending with the water. As you can see, we just pick some color with the brush for color and then with the other one dip a little bit into water. We just go grab the water, so to speak, and then we drag it across the paper. By controlling the amount of water that you have on your brush, you have to finely tune this sensitivity, then you can control the fade, meaning how long the fade is gonna go, how smooth the transition is gonna be. Now, a little change in where you place your brush can make a big difference. So we just go touch the edge, go a little bit back in, and then back out again. So not inside completely, not outside completely, just touch the edge, go back in a little bit, and then drag it out. This way, you're not gonna dilute the main color too much, and you're gonna have enough pigment to carry. As you can see, depending on how much water you have, your fade is gonna go for longer. So by finely tuning the amount of water you have on your brush, you control when that stops, in case you're working on smaller details rather than big areas. You can see what happened when the color touched the water. Just to make sure this is not black, this is a gray wash, so that's why it's a bit more gray. You see how the moment that the pigment touches the water, it starts spreading. You can have a different combinations of techniques in within this, meaning that you can either drop the color and leave it as it is, and that's if you're looking for certain type of textures, for example, with some sort of vegetation or more abstract mist and stuff like that. Or you can smooth it out once you drop the color to blend it a little bit more and make those edges even more soft. As always, my best recommendation is make some time and space for failure, meaning that you dedicate some time and paper just for that and try everything you can imagine so you can become comfortable with all sort of effect and you can get accustomed to different kinds of techniques. As you can see, once it's dry, this technique gives you beautifully soft edges and those are incredible for building layers and making backgrounds and smooth it out, all sort of subjects. So it's definitely something that is worth practicing and learning because it's really gonna help you bring your stuff to the next level. This is the hierarchy of how you should build a painting or an illustration or a tattoo or any visual product for that matter, right? There are many, many more things to be seen in the picture than just what you're looking at. So by thinking about this new piece of information, now we can see things in a different way, right? We can appreciate more, especially uh, well-crafted paintings because we understand the true value beyond, oh yeah, you can make that thing looks real. <laughs> there is more to it, right? And also this one, right? This is a bit more complex, but we have everything that radiates from that point you know, following the different plays of values and shapes, like the hands, you see that are vertical this way, that way, the faces, right? Uh, the horizontal kind of body. So it's a very cool interplay of shapes and relationships.